Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And so today we'll be looking at a product which I have been looking forward to for a long time. So as you may have recognized, this is the Platypus Quick Draw, Platypus. And it's a micro filter and it uses uh, hollow fibers as do most of the others like soya and catadine and all that, the bee freeze. Yeah, so looking at the packaging as it comes in, you can see it's bashed up as all heck. Because my friend carried it in from Canada and by the time he handed it to me, it had been in his luggage for quite a while. But anyway, the product's still good inside. Just the box is a... Uh, I've seen better days. Anyway, fill and squeeze. It comes with a bladder, which is quite nice. And it hooks on... And what does it say? Fast flowing. That's true, but we'll speak about this in a while. Up to 3 litres per minute, which is actually quite good. It's ultra light. 3.3 ounces. I think the Sawyer's squeeze 0.1, the big one, is roughly about the same weight. Uh, a main differentiator from the Sawyer is that this is a shake to clean filter. You don't really need to back flush, though you can. I think the Catadyne also is a shake to clean. And we'll have a look at that later as well. Uh, durable double layer reservoir. Yeah, so apparently their reservoir has uh, multiple layers, which makes it tasteless. Uh, I mean, the water does not pick up a plastic taste and all that. So um, it removes, well, protozoa and all that. We'll talk about this later as well. Moving around the side, uh, the best filter system per ounce, well, debatable. Of course, they're going to say that it's a product, right? So the quick draw, well, you can go into a bottle, you can transfer it to a bag, or you can drink straight. This is basically what most um, membrane type filters, hollow, hollow fiber type filters, uh, boast about. Uh, it's made by Platy. Their, their bags are typically, typically quite good. So what comes, uh, no, this is compatible with, sorry, the Platy 2.0 bag, uh, smart water bottles, and the Platy water tank, which is a much bigger one, which is actually quite cool. So it meets P231 standards for removal of bacteria and protozoa. Keep that in mind. Uh, we'll come back to that as well. Uh, what else is on the back? Nothing much. Top and bottom. All right. So getting into it, let's pop this open. And what do we have inside? Oh, this falls out immediately. And we can toss that to the side. You get the bladder, which is quite nice. I like the bladder. And in the corner, you get the filter. So, let's talk about the filter. Boxer. Oh, and you get manuals. Ooh, lots of manuals. Check it out. Never been opened. Don't know if I'm going to open it. Anyway, toss this to the side. So this is what you get. The platypus filter bag feels really nice and solid. So this is one liter and we'll look at this later. Let's look at the filter first. So the filter is nice in the sense that it's very cylindrical as opposed to the soya squeeze which has that gigantic bump at the side. It comes with its own cap which is nice and you can actually see the filters, um, well, the microfiber paws up there. I'll try and drop a closer picture later. And it closes quite snug. There's a little rubber gasket over here, which actually goes into the inside of the spout. So it forms a nice watertight seal. The back also comes with a cover, which is a defining feature of the platypus. And quick draw and you open it up, there's an O-ring in there, which forms a watertight seal, and it uses this slot system to lock it in. So it's quite simple, just line it up, and it pulls it down and it seals it up. The benefit of this is you don't need to put this filter in a Ziploc bag or something like that if you're gonna sleep with it or something to keep it from freezing, which is what we have been generally doing with the Sawyer forever, right? Uh, this, it's a little bit of a rubberized surface, which is nice. And it has a clean and dirty marking here. Well, that's kind of a given, isn't it? 
Um, looking at the bottom, you can actually see the filter fibers over here, which is good and bad at the same time, I guess. I don't know what to think about this. I, the engineer in me says this is not a good thing, but anyway. If you all have used the Sawyer in the past, you all know that the rubber gasket from the Sawyer likes to fall out. Well, it doesn't like to fall out, but because of their design choice, it tends to fall out. Platypus has alleviated that, I guess, with their gasket having a little notch there, which I guess goes underneath the plastic and actually holds it from coming out. Um, I'll drop a close-up picture on that later, but I think that's what they are going for, and I, it'll probably do the job. So your filter fibers are exposed there. Um, the other thing which they claim to be unique to them, which I guess officially is unique to them, it's called um, Integrity Testable. So by that it means that if your membranes are cracked, for the Sawyer previously, if we slept with, oh, we, sorry, if we didn't sleep with it and we left it out and temperatures went below freezing, the assumption would be that the, wa the frozen water would have cracked the fibers and the filter would no longer be safe to use. But the thing is, we, wouldn't, we didn't know. So what Platypus has done is, you can actually take this apart, undo it all the way, there's another O-ring up there, and this is the um, where the fibers come out. So they're just looped up over here, and then they're epoxied into place and they're cut off. So the center of the fiber is now exposed. Water comes in from the outside of the fiber tube, goes into the fiber, and then runs along the center, which is basically like a straw, and comes out here. And this is where the clean uh, water comes out. So there's a lot of videos for testing on there. Uh, on the web and basically you just hook on sauce, I guess you could use the bladder if you want to say that. And you, once your fiber is properly wetted, you flip it up and you try to blow air. The thing is, on a wet fiber, air is does not like to go through. It's very easy. It's almost like pressing up against a clogged filter if your fibers are solid. But if they're not, you would see air starting to bubble through because it's no longer going through the wall of the membrane. It's going through the end of a straw, which is because the fiber is broken, right? So then you'll see a, straw, a, a stream of bubbles here, in which case then you can assume that the filter is compromised and platypus advises you to throw it away. In a pinch, to me, I would think, you probably could dab some super glue or something over the place where it's bubbling. First mark it with a marker, dry it out nicely, then put some super glue there to, to block up the specific... Um, broken fiber. You still have hundreds of other fibers here, so just blocking up maybe a dozen of them with a gigantic glob of glue shouldn't compromise it too much, the performance. So you could try that, then you do your um, integrity test again. If it works, it works. That's just my thought. But anyway, um, that's the integrity check, which uh, Platypus claims to be unique to them, which I agree for now. And and then using it, you just bundle it all up and... All right. And you have a little lanyard hole there, so you could put a loop through here and just like hang it on your pack if you want to. The next unique thing about the filter is that it has two connection systems. One is a standard 28 millimeter uh, threaded connection, which smart water bottles and pop bottles can connect into, which is... This is just a one liter, which I have. You can just screw it in and it makes the sound and, sol and solid connection. And you could filter using this. Or you could drink from this. Alternatively, you could use their pouch, which they have, for whatever reason, I can't imagine why, use the same type of connection as this. So if you want to connect it to the bag, you can, and it is a really good connection. I bet if you asked Platypus why they did that, they would say that this gives you a larger hole for filling, which I agree. But in the event your filter is busted for whatever reason, you no longer, 
you are no longer able to collect water in your own bladder and go to your friend and say, could I bum off your filter and just use your filter to filter water. This thing becomes a bag which is not that usable in that sense. Once the filter is busted off, if you want to use it with another filter, it becomes an unusable bag. So to me, if I was designing it and I want to make it universal, I would have put a 28 millimeter uh, connection here, just like what uh, Nock does and while well, the Sawyer bags do and all that. Yeah, I get the bigger nozzle, but nah, I think it's, they're just trying to be proprietary. The other thing that if Platypus is watching this, and I don't think they are, but anyway, if anybody is work, can get in co contact with them and actually get this solution through or suggestion through to them, you have a place to put a lanyard here. Why not? mold just a tiny um, lanyard anchor point here because it would make it easier to I don't know hook this up off on a carabiner or something like that while we're not using it yeah I know Sawyer bags and all that don't have it out but that could be a differentiator have a little hole here without puncturing a hole through it to anchor a carabiner here the same for this cover lost and the thing is <clears throat> on a Sawyer bag, if I lose their cover, I can just use a pop bottle cover and I can still reuse the bag. If I lose the cover for this bag, this bag is useless because this is a unique cover. It is only for platypus. So I would think that having a little lanyard loop or something, uh, anchor point or eyelet here would make a big difference. So to me, that's a negative, having a unique cover. What else? Okay, for cleaning this, basically, um, like I mentioned on the box, it's uh, just need to shake to clean. So basically, connect it to a bottle or even the pouch and just shake it about. And because the membranes are exposed here, I guess, and maybe a bit looser inside, it just sloshes it around and knocks off most of the... Um, dirt. If you really need to back flush it, as I said, this was properly well designed and all that, you just pop this open, press a pop bottle against it, a smart water bottle and all that, and just press and squeeze. This conical section and the texture of the surface, which is slightly rubbery, not it's basically probably, what should I say, flexible plastic, slightly flexible. It forms a really snug fit and you can back flush through it just like that. You don't need to use a syringe or a smart, uh, smart water bottle sports cap to plug onto the thing and all that. It's well designed. The other thing which I need to mention is it's not inline compatible, which I think they actually mentioned on your website. The Sawyer, yeah, you can put the bottle in here, but uh, you have that um, connection piece at the end here, which you could plug a tube in to use as a gravity feed. So this is purely um, filter into a bottle kind of thing or a pouch kind of thing. But then again, what I've heard a lot of people say is since it filters so quickly, you don't need to consider gravity feed as an option, which I guess is fair. So now let's get down to the technical part of this filter. So the Sawyer point one, the Sawyer squeeze point one, is basically a point one micron filtration system. This is a point two micron filtration system that's published on both websites, Sawyer and Platypus. The difference between the Platypus and the Sawyer is that the Sawyer clearly states that their filtration is absolute, whereas Platypus and Catadine and everyone else is silent. So for those not from the filtration um, world or not familiar with filters, absolute is always better. Nominal is an average. The definition of an absolute filter is the filter rating, meaning 99.9% .9 of the particles larger than the specified micron rating <coughs> excuse me, will be trapped within the filter. Nominal, on the other hand, the filter rating indicates the approximate size particle, the majority of which will not pass through the filter. And when they say the majority of which, it can be anything from 60 to 90%. So take that for what it's worth. That can also explain why platypus and catadine and all that 
can get such high flow rates because their pores, the average pore size effectively could be larger versus the soil which is uh, smaller. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say smaller, but it is more stringently controlled. And the other thing about it, it being 0.2 microns, is that, well, it claims to filter, what is it now, 99.9999% uh, of bacteria. And interestingly, it says only 99.9% .9 of protozoa is removed. Whereas for uh, soya, it's 99.99999% uh, of bacteria. They have one more nine there, so that's f five decimal nines. And protozoa is 99.9999, four nines. The interesting thing is protozoa is bigger than bacterium. Uh, protozoa ru runs in the range of one to 10 microns, whereas bacterium is down to 0.2 microns. So, um, you can see here, this runs the border of bacterium. When I was, <laughs> I got this thing right, and I had my soya, and I, initially I was thinking, hey, let's just give this a shot. But as I was doing research for this video, these specifications came to mind. And there is one other thing to consider. Let's Leptospirosis caused by leptospires, which is, I think, yeah, it is actually spread through the urine of rodents. If you are not in a place that has this problem, that's well and good. But for those of you who um, are exposed to this risk, it's interesting to note that leptospires diameter is 0.15 microns and the length can be 10 to 20 microns. 0.15, that is smaller than 0.2. So this will not block leptospires, which cause leptospirosis, which actually attacks the brain and can be very, very devastating. After I read that, I thought, well, I'm just going to go back to my soy. I'm probably going to return this or sell this or something. So by and large, the platypus quick draw is a good filter. The design has been improved phen phenomenally over the Sawyer Squeeze Point 1. I hope they improve theirs as well. Uh, this is a really compact filter. It, it feels very, very well built. It has to function for the integrity test. It closes up on both sides. You can sleep with it. It doesn't leak. It has done so many things so well, but a couple of things, they are using a larger pore size 0.2 and I suspect they are using a nominal specification and not an absolute. It, it helps them achieve that higher fantastic flow rate of 3 litres per minute, that reputation of being almost uncloggable, but it is compromising on performance, which is something uh, Soya is very proud of, but that extra performance comes at a penalty of being more easily clogged and also probably a slower, a lower flow rate than this. It's a, it's a good thing. I guess if you're using it in the back country with no risk of leptospirosis and all that stuff, leptospires, this would work well. But I generally don't like to keep two or three uh, of the same at home. Uh, if it works, it works. And I think I'll just be sticking with the soy on this. Very, very well built product, very good quality build. But uh, in my view, for my needs, I don't think it lives up to what I would be aspiring for. So, yeah, probably going in the return spin. Well, guys, anyway, that's just my thoughts on the Platypus Quick Draw. It's not something that I've heard on the web. A lot of people sing its praises, but uh, on the technical standpoint, it does point it does fall down but anyway if anybody of you any one of you can un explain to me why it filters almost the same amount of bacteria removal but it does not filter the larger uh, protozoa and all that 
its performance competitor, Soy, is much poorer by a significant margin. Please let me know in the comments. I'm trying to understand that. Anyway, guys, I've been rambling on for a long time. A lot of technical stuff uh, being mentioned here and discussed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you used it before? Um, have you uh, done an integrity test before on yours and found anything? Well, that's all I have time for for this one. It's run way too long. I have to cut it down a bit. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found something useful in here. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.